All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking on fine print tonight. The French President Emmanuel Macron's remarks refusing to rule out the possibility of deployment of Western ground forces in Ukraine are finding simply no takers amongst the European allies. The Kremlin, on the other hand, has responded with a very stern warning. Experts say that Macron's comments fit well with his reputation as a bit of a diplomatic disruptor who challenges conventional thinking. But they've also cautioned that his comments could pave the way for greater direct Western involvement in the war in Ukraine. Macron had suggested that everything that is necessary must be done to ensure the defeat of Russia. To which Ukraine's strongest ally, the United States, has reacted saying that it will not send ground troops to Ukraine. The Germany, Britain, Italy, Spain, Poland and the Czech Republic have also distanced themselves from this idea. While Macron's comments have increased tensions amongst the NATO allies, it has also sharpened divisions between France and Germany, whose relationship is at the core of the European political cooperation. Macron provoked Berlin, noting that some nations nearly two years ago had only wanted to send, quote-unquote, sleeping bags and helmets. In response to which, the German officials had accused France of not sending enough military aid to Ukraine. Just the talks of a possibility of confrontation between Russia and NATO indicates the danger of escalation. Russia and the United States possess the world's largest nuclear arsenal, making the US president repeatedly caution that a conflict between Russia and NATO could actually trigger World War III. And to give us more perspective on this, we are being joined by Mr. Dov Zuckheim, who's, a form, who's been a former Under Secretary of Defense in George W. Bush's administration and currently a senior advisor at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Dov is, in fact, joining us live from Washington, D.C. Now, Mr. Zuckheim, thank you very much indeed sir, for taking time out and speaking to us here in Vienna. Now, this is a very critical moment, and what Emmanuel Macron has said is something that has clearly divided the NATO military alliance. Now, Emmanuel Macron has said that the possibility of sending ground forces cannot be ruled out in the Ukraine war, but there is absolutely no taker for a comment such as this, either in Washington or other NATO European capitals. What do you make of the French president's statement? Well, as, as you reported, um, he is a bit of a disruptor. Um, he's trying to send a message to uh, Russia and quite frankly, Russia's in no position to attack NATO right now. Uh, if you think about it, most of the troops that face NATO are actually now deployed to uh, be part of the uh, invasion of Ukraine. Um, there isn't very much that uh, Putin can do right now against mm -hmm. NATO, and he knows it. But this, so this war is not extent, about NATO. Mr. Zakami, if I can just interject there. This war is not about NATO. NATO has been backing Ukraine. And the noises that we hear from the NATO allies is that we should help Ukraine as much as possible to defend itself. But now, increasingly, the help that is coming forth from the Western allies of Ukraine appears more in the nature of lip service rather than actual military aid. Well, that's right. Um, but there's still a debate here in Washington as to whether uh, we will provide more aid to Ukraine. The latest I've heard, by the way, in terms of military aid, is that there will be some deal. It may not be all 65 billion, uh, by the way, which isn't all military aid anyway. About 15 is, is humanitarian, and the EU could do that. Um, there'll be some, some number uh, that will be passed eventually uh, as it's coming from the other NATO allies. My point was simply that the Russian threats don't go very far. Meanwhile, the French have kind of backtracked uh, as many people know, they're now saying what we really meant or what Macron really meant was help with mine clearing, uh, help with uh, dealing with cyber attacks. In other words, no uh, real attacks on Russia per se. By the way, Lithuania seems to be indicating it might be willing to send some troops to Ukraine. NATO is divided, but I don't think one should make more of this. It's, it's a tempest in a teapot. Um, Germany and France uh, are not at each other's throats. If they're arguing about who can help Ukraine better, that's a good thing anyway. 
My final question to you is this. You know, the longer the military aid from the West gets delayed for Ukraine, the likelihood that Russia can actually gain a clear advantage and by that win this war is very real. Is Washington waiting for that eventuality? Not at all. Not at all. I think the Biden administration is pushing very hard to uh, get that military assistance. Uh, the president has spoken up about this more than once now. Uh, there's remember also that this is not just a, a package for Ukraine alone. It's a package for Taiwan, which we care about because of China. It's a package for Israel, which has a lot of support in Congress. It's a combined package and the negotiations are continuing. The pressure uh, on the Speaker of the House, Mr. Johnson, who has waffled on this, is growing stronger. And as I say, there's a general sense that Ukraine will get military aid from us. Uh, and of course, if we provide military aid, we're setting an example for the rest of NATO, which, by the way, the European allies are talking amongst themselves about beefing up their own capability, which frankly is limited. All right. I think that's, that's an interesting perspective there. Thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Khan, for joining us and with, with that perspective from Washington, D.C. Thank you for having me. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.